Today in the news, we got some 2022 Ryzen, Navi 2X, and Ampere. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. In the last few months, a leaker named MiBUW has been slowly releasing a roadmap for all of AMD's CPUs and APUs. That roadmap goes as far as the first half of 2022 and gives us some insight on what's to come. The most recent update to this roadmap shows us what the APU lineup will offer. If you wanna learn about the rest of this roadmap, click right here for a video I did on it. But what is new is the specs for Rembrandt or Rembrandt. According to MiBUW, it will feature the Zen 3 architecture and RDNA 2, but this time with a 6 nanometer process. This is surprising since according to AMD's own CPU and GPU roadmaps, 6 nanometers isn't mentioned anywhere. 6 nanometers or N6 for TSMC adds these improvements over N7P or 7 nanometer enhanced. You can get up to an 18% increase in density, more EUV layers, and it's essentially a drop in upgrade, meaning that it's designed is compatible with N7P. This Zen 3 processor would also support DDR5 memory at 5200 MHz. N6 actually entered risk production earlier this year. So that's 2022. What about the Ryzen 5000 mobile of APUs, which are coming very soon? Well, Tom Apisak, leaker extraordinaire, has found the first benchmarks for it in the ashes of the Singularity database. This 5700U has, according to the benchmark, eight cores and 16 threads. This is a departure from the 4700U, which has eight cores and eight threads. According to the rumors, the lineup for the 5000U series of APUs will be pretty confusing with a mix of higher clocked Zen 2 Renoir refreshes in the form of Rembrandt, apparently it's the 55 and 5700U, and on the higher end, there would be Zen 3 variants in the form of Cezanne, the 56 and 5800Us. See how confusing it could be? Don't expect Navi graphics though, as Cezanne is also slated to include Vega graphics. Personally, I don't think AMD is gonna go that way since it's confusing as heck, but hey, rumors are rumors, right? Speaking of graphics, we got some Navi 2X news. This information is from a user on Reddit who found the code name and some specs for what appears to be AMD's lower end GPUs based on the RDNA 2 architecture. This information comes from the latest Rock M update from AMD. Rock M is an open source exascale platform from the company. Anyways, in that update, the code name Navy Flounder is found with some specification. That GPU would have 40 compute units, 2,500 60 stream processors, and it would feature a 192-bit wide memory bus. Now, the core count is considered accurate given it's the number of shader engines multiplied by the number of dual CUs per those shader engines. As for the memory bus width, it was deduced by the number of texture channel caches, but bus width can be decoupled from it, so it's possible that this spec is wrong. But if Navi 21 has a 256-bit wide bus with 16 gigabytes of VRAM, Navi flounders would have 12 gigabytes at 192 bits. This GPU could be the one we saw in an older Ashes benchmarks, which placed it at around a 20% improvement compared to the 5700 XT, but it's too early to tell. Dim Gray Cave Fish is also another code name. This time it's for Navi 23. This one was found by Komachi and Saka over on Twitter. Next up, we got some Nvidia news. Remember on the uh, last episode, we saw an early tech lab review for the RTX 3090, and we were disappointed by it being only about 10 to maximum 15% faster on average when compared to the 3080. Yep, well, Nvidia essentially confirmed that with their latest post saying that for 4K gaming, the 3090 is 10 to 15% faster on average. But that doesn't really matter since, well, it's a $1,500 GPU. So what about the rest of the stack? Well, a leaked slide from Galaxy shows pretty much the entire lineup from the 3060 and up and how they are positioned compared to the RTX 2000 series. Thanks to that slide, we also have another confirmation of the 20 gigabyte RTX 3080 and another card between the 3080 and 3070, likely the 16 gigabyte version of the 3070. The 3060 also makes an appearance and will apparently match the RTX 3080 in performance. If this RTX 3060 takes the same 300 to $350 price point point as the 2060, that would basically mean we have a 50% price cut after two years. That's pretty good. 
And that is pretty much it for the catch up, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.